Welcome back. It's time for us to take a look at our second hot topic. Today is a Technophile Tuesday, and we take a look at technology critically. And in this hot topic, we want to take a look at access to technology and how it's broadening our imagination as we host a Nollywood filmmaker, film editor, and director in the person of King Asu. Good morning, King Asu. Good morning. I'm very happy to be here with you this morning. So happy to have you join us to take a look at the future of Nigerian cinema and the advancing technology behind it. Now, you and your members are building startups to develop niche solutions for the second largest film industry in the world, which is Nollywood. Nollywood is a big phenomenon. You contribute 2.3% to the GDP. Tell us, how are you using technology to advance Nollywood from back in the days when we had living in bondage and the rest of them? Uh, well, to, to start with, I appreciate you for choosing to talk about uh, the Nollywood film industry today. Uh, when you do this, uh, you help in the advancement of the film industry in Nigeria. Uh, the film industry started uh, actively about 30 years ago uh, with Living in Bondage, which uh, was uh, made by O.K. Ogun Jofo. I think uh, it started all like a joke because O.K. was uh, uh, selling movies in those days. He would go to China, buy films, and then come and sell you know, go travel all over the world to buy films and come and sell. And so it got to a point where uh, he thought that why can't we just start telling our own stories? And so he went back to his uh, business partners again in China and then asked, uh, can I buy a camera? What can I use to start making my films? And that's okay, you can buy a camera. So he got, in, he started with uh, the DHL cameras of those days. Uh, these were cameras that were capturing images on just uh, uh, 1K then. In fact, it was, I think it was less than 1K. The, the vision was less than 1K at the time. Hmm. Gradually, uh, technology started to come in and then improve uh, to 2K. As at uh, early 2000, 2000, up to 2005, uh, hmm. Digitalization started to come in. Where the, the, the filmmakers graduated from 1K to 2K, and at that time it was a big deal to shoot your film on 2K. You know, uh, that is uh, 1920 by 1080. It was a big deal. You know, I remember the first time I edited a film uh, that was uh, shot on 2K. That was Lucky Wives, the Lucky Wives uh, TV series. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, when we shot Lucky Wives, it was on 2K. And then editing was a big deal because you have to upgrade your digital edit system. I was using uh, uh, ADOS at the time uh, with a Windows system. So we had to, to try and uh, upgrade the system to meet up the standard, you know. And I remember that when we finished editing and mastered the film, I sent it to South Africa then, uh, to Africa Magic at the time. Uh, we had this problem where it was returned to us because the format didn't match their broadcast format then. So a whole lot of things have evolved over time. Uh, that is uh, how many years ago? Fast forward to today, uh, 2K is also gradually beginning to uh, become outdated. Uh, a lot of people are still shooting on 2K, yes, but what is in vogue now is you hear a lot of filmmakers uh, using uh, 4K. Some shoot above 4K. Some go as far as 6K. A lot of digital cameras have come out that uh, can do a whole lot. And so you begin to see uh, very tremendous uh, differences in the quality of picture, quality of sound. Even uh, uh, in the area of sound recording, you see wonderful sound equipments that are coming up now. Uh, in those days, we used to use the Axdan 42. But now they are, even the company have improved, uh, improved so much that you get a whole lot of uh, 
very beautiful crisp sound, super uh, beautiful sound. Uh, from two cha uh, channels now, they go up to six channels, some eight channels, some even 12 channels. You know, so you the sound man can control what he wants to hear. Uh, some sound people can comfortably film with the generator around because they know how to shut down the generator noise and continue filming. You know all the challenges we have here uh, in uh, in Africa in uh, the area of making films. You go to film in a particular place and there's so much noise. Uh, you know, there is uh, a whole lot of distractions. And all that. Uh, that will disturb your picture sometimes dust in the environment sometimes uh, just a lot of things that disturb film in general so, but digitalization has helped a lot and filmmakers Nigerian filmmakers trust me they are doing great you okay. have to we all have to salute them in that area they are doing great right now Indeed. if you watch current movies you will see that uh, filmmakers are doing wonderfully well Indeed. in that area they have adapted so well uh, in this uh, digitalization stuff Indeed, cinematographers now shoot in higher definition. And of course, you now have better management of your time because, as you have alluded, instead of spending days shooting, you now have higher technology, better technology that makes it easier for you to work. That also impacts on the, the labor market. Nollywood is known to employ a large number of the youth, indeed, people into uh, the industry. Talk to us about how this improve, incre improvement in technology has boosted your resources and helped in, 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 in taking people out of the labor market. Uh, well, uh, technology generally has uh, done, a, done a lot. Let me look at, let me talk to you about the the era, the area of uh, distribution, how technology really helped. You know, uh, I've been in the industry for about 14 or 15 years or so. I have a senior colleagues who've been there for 25 years, 30 years. Some started from the very beginning. People like OK, people like uh, Tico Benson, uh, 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 Zepe Giro, and the rest of them. You see, at the time, uh, when we had what we used to call the marketers, uh, filmmakers then, we had marketers, directors, we, or when you finish making a film, the distribution uh, was only done in uh, DVDs at the time. Even before DVDs, we had uh, the video cassettes then, then it moved up to CDs, later on DVDs, and of course, you know, the technology has moved now uh, from uh, a DVD to Blu-ray, and then it went for that. To now, if you go to houses, I'm very sure you will hardly see them playing DVDs because uh, digitalization has taken over. So distribution is now easier. There are a lot of distribution uh, channels now. Mm. And so that uh, has uh, created a situation where there is increment in uh, production activities all over the place. And of course, when there is increased production activities, you will also see that there is employment. A, a lot of people are involved in making their own films because you can actually pick your smartphone and you are able to uh, tell a, a short story. You can see uh, skit makers all over the place. Uh, there's uh, YouTube, uh, there is Amazon, there are a lot of channels where you can just make your film and, and put it there. Uh, it's no longer like it was in the days where if you finish making a film, you have to, you master it, put it into a, a tape, and then you go to Nira, we had a company in uh, Surulira at the time, Nira, I don't know if they are still there, you go to Nira, you talk of making the CD plates, after making the CD plates, you know, you put them in cartons, and then you start looking at distribution. You, you have to physically look for people around uh, Iweka, Ruru, Nicha, Pan uh, Ruraba, Idumota, uh, all the markets that had major distributors. You have to go to them and then uh, you work out how to send your films around to market them. It was a, a very big problem at that time. Uh, uh, employing people uh, regularly, turning films regularly was a bit more difficult because you have to wait until when your movies finish selling. Uh, when they sell, then you see uh, what you have been able to make to be able to make your next film. Uh, 
but now distribution is easier. You finish your movie today. Uh, if there is no way to sell it, you just look at it. You create your YouTube channel. You 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 dump it there. Uh, you monetize it. In fact, even Facebook, you can put your film on Facebook because Facebook too pays. If you have somebody who can manage your Facebook page uh, from overseas, uh, if you are in Nigeria here, because I think they have not opened uh, uh, ability for us to be able to deal with uh, 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 directly. Uh, uh, using our Facebook pages here to monetize. Before you are able to monetize a Facebook page here in Nigeria, you, you, may ha you must have to have a manager who is based abroad. Mm -hmm. So digitalization has helped in creating more distribution avenues where you can finish your product and you put it there uh, and you begin to make your money. So you can keep filming and because of that, uh, so many avenues where you can distribute your films, it has made people to begin to, you can film as many times as possible. You don't have to wait for returns because uh, production processes now for those who do skits is cheaper. You can pick your phone and record a, uh, one or two short stories and then you put it out there and, and that is it. So it has helped. I can tell you that because of digitalization, you have increased production, and uh, that, yes. of course, has resulted in increased revenue. Tell me about um, the, 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 the quality of your budget now. I mean, we saw lots of low-budget movies in the past. All that is changing with, the, uh, pe with, with, with people like Mo Abudu and, um, and so many others who have joined Nollywood in making films really, really interesting and captivating. Um, what sort of high-budget movies? Hello. Oh, we're having a bit of technology problem right now, and I hope that is resolved. I've been talking with a uh, Nollywood movie producer and actor, uh, King Asu, on the future of Nigerian cinema and the advancing technology behind it, and he's been giving us some very useful information on how they started and how they've managed to use technology to advance the quality of movies that they make and increase output and production and king as well. uh, i'm back well, i lost you a bit there would you like to, can you please repeat that question oh, definitely uh, you were talking about budgeting yes I, I was talking about budgeting back then we had lots of we saw lots of low budget movies but now with people like mo abudu people a, a whole lot of people have come into the fray and have increased the quality and the budget of the movies that we now see talk to us about this <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, when we started to have uh, the return of uh, Nigerian cinemas, uh, we had uh, Netflix coming in, we had uh, a lot of other distribution networks coming in. Naturally, the quality of film had to uh, improve, and of course, the budget, because uh, uh, quality comes with budget big budget mm -hmm. the budget has to get bigger for you to get a uh, certain uh, level of quality if you are filming for example on 2k and uh, 4k they may be that may affect, uh, affect your budget you know if you're going to the cinema with a movie now and the cinema is outputting uh, to the audience on 4k of course you have to look for a 4k camera the cost generally is not the same if you're renting or uh, uh, a 2K camera, it is cheaper than the cost of a 4K camera. So those are the things that naturally uh, uh, in, uh, increased the, the cost of production. And of course, uh, if you look at big players like Mo Audu, you look at big players like, uh, you know, most of the production companies you see around now, you will see that they are making films uh, for uh, very big uh, uh, distributors, all right? Like if, if you go to the cinemas and you're going to Netflix, for example, Netflix, you can't give them any movie that's less than 2K, mm. that, that is, that is less, than, less than 4K. All Netflix uh, movies, the standard is that they must be 4K, you know? So the cost of cameras, the cost of equipment, the cost of hiring a, 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 a cast uh, and crew has improved because people are also seeing, the cast and crew are also seeing 
that the producers are making a huge turnover uh, from their work. And so if uh, you hear that the box office has hit 200 million, 300 million, you know, 400 million, uh, when next that producer comes to you, of course, the actors too will uh, increase their cost and, all, and their, their fee and all that. So generally, to make a good film, it, it costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money to make uh, a good film because uh, you will want technology. When we did uh, the Ten Virgins, uh, Blessing Egg Base, Ten Virgins, big concept production, you know, there was a particular uh, scene where uh, we needed like 1,000 persons to appear. But of course, we couldn't cast 1,000 persons here in Lagos. Uh, that movie was shot somewhere around Aja. And uh, we were able to get uh, 34 extras. And we wanted those 34 extras to appear on screen as 1,000. And so you will need CGI to be able to do that. And that cost a lot of money. So what do you do? You get a CGI person. We've got a guy called Sukhok who came in from Abuja. The guy was, uh, uh, he's very good with CGI. He came in and uh, I think the entire length of that particular scene was uh, a combination of all the CGI scenes was about six minutes. And that cost a lot of money. I, I don't want to mention the figure here, but uh, you know, technology, technology costs a lot. If you're going to make a, a quality film, it will have to cost a lot of money because to be able to get those uh, softwares that are original. Mm -hmm. Because some of the times when you look, when you watch Nigerian movies, you can watch an act action movie where you see uh, policemen or, or, or exchange of gunfire, and you see uh, shooting that happens. The, they will shoot a vehicle and then the, the glass will not break. They will shoot a vehicle, there will be no uh, perforation of the vehicle. You you see the vehicle in the next scene, all clean, no holes, nothing, no bullet uh, scratches and all that. You know, gone are those days. We have those kind of uh, mistakes there. It wasn't really a mistake, it was poor budgeting, you know. The technology wasn't there. But now, mm -hmm. if you watch some Nigerian movies, you will see these things happening live. You will see that if there is a, 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 a fire, you will see the fire to look real. If there's gunshot, you will see it to look real. Mm -hmm. If there is a cut, it will look very real. Because it, exactly, uh, you touched on you employing very solid technology, and it costs a lot of money. These are the things that have pushed up the budget of production to the high heavens. Yes, I'm glad you touched on that film trick aspect because I was also going to ask you uh, when you watch some foreign movies, and I give a lot of credit to Nollywood uh, movie producers and directors. You're doing an amazing job. But sometimes when we watch uh, some foreign movies and compare them with some action movies that Nollywood produces, you, you find yourself asking some questions and you wish you could see more of the kind of technology you see deployed in Nollywood, Hollywood movies in Nollywood movies. Do you still have that challenge? Because we still seem to see some of that. There, is, who there, is, there, is. there is. The challenge is still there uh, because uh, apart from uh, having the technology, the, the, the softwares, most of these things are made easier by softwares, mm -hmm. you know, post-production softwares. So sometimes when you have the software, the second thing that will be required is the user. Can the film editor, can the CGI person apply this software properly? Can they be used? So that takes us to training. Filmmakers will need to train. They need to, if you are interested in CGI, you have to go and train and understand how to use these things properly. Because there are primary uh, CGI uh, softwares where you go and you just know how to bring out, uh, for example, uh, fire from the mouth of a gun, smoke after uh, uh, firing a gun and all that. But it doesn't stop there. Can you make the vehicle look well prepared? If the gun vehicle, can you make it look real? Can the fire look real, not make the fire look plastic? You see fire and it's looking plastic. You see the bomb a building and the building goes off in flame and you see the flame looking uh, white or looking, uh, you know, it looks fake. Mm. You know, so it depends on how intense uh, or original the technology is. And of course, the applier, the person, the, the editor, the person who uses it, the person who applies it. So that brings us to training. I think uh, over the years, uh, Nollywood is trying the, most of the young, I tell you, some of the directors now, the CGI people, the, the, the sound men, they are very young people who need time to, to, to train and get better uh, over, over, over time, you know. So I think we will get there. We are improving. Trust me, if you watch some Nigerian movies now, 
you will give it to us. No doubt you are improving. There is another question that one wonders sometimes uh, about when you hear that this movie grossed so, so, so amount. So you wonder, the box office ratings, how verifiable are they? Uh, well, some filmmakers may not uh, like this, but I'll tell you this for, for free. Uh, some of the figures are falsified. Hmm. Some of the figures are falsified. Yes, yes. Some are done for marketing purposes. Hmm. But some are true, too. Some are true. Give it to some of the people. Some are true. Uh, there was a time we were trying to make a movie. I think we were trying to go to the cinema with the movie. And we went to a sponsor. Somebody suggested that we meet someone. And when we go to the person, the person said, well, I can give you 50 million to do this movie, but you're going to tell the press that I give you 100. Hmm. You know, tell the press that the movie costs 100. So sometimes the executive producers who bring in money, uh, they want to, maybe they have gotten this money from, from a third party that you don't know, or for whatever reason, you know, they just want you to uh, hype the budget and make it look so huge, you know, so that uh, the movie was, ah, this movie was made 100 million. And some of the times it doesn't really, because you know, they, we don't have a proper check and balance system. Mm -hmm. And of course, even in the cinema, say, where they tell you, ah, the movie has, uh, made 200 million box office release and all that. Uh, we don't have a, a proper system here that checks. Oh, 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 overseas, it's automatic. When you hear 200 million, it is 200 million from the box office because they have a digital process where as people are buying the cards to uh, watch the movie, it's automated. As, so at the end of the, the week, it can, you can be sure that 200 million is 200 million. Mm. I, I can't uh, be too sure of uh, our systems here if, if uh, you know, they are that digitalized. But some are starting to be corrected. Uh, some may be correct, some... Some uh, are falsified. Some are film yes. tricks all the way. Yes. <laughs> well, yes. thank you so much, <laughs> King Asso. King Asso is a filmmaker, film editor, and director with Nigeria's knowledge of the second biggest movie industry in the whole wide world. And we're very proud of that indeed. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is the package we have for you today. It's been amazing on the breakfast this morning. Thank you so much for your time. I am Maureen Menong Wezigwe. Before I go, I'll give you our quote of the day. And it is coming from none other than John Lasseta. The art challenges the technology and the technology inspires the art. Do not forget, it is a Technophile Tuesday. So, there you have it. The art tech challenges the technology and the technology challenges the art that's from john lasseter i am maureen menong is good you have a splendid day and join us tomorrow on the breakfast